welcome back to my channel marina here as always i'm excited to welcome you to another video yes i'm not alone as usual since you people have taught my channel to marry channel we have brought mr Yeteng back again to have another conversation if it's your first time here you're welcome my name is marina we live in saskatoon canada and on this channel i share information that makes settling into life in canada seamless for newcomers if this is information you're interested in, please do well to hit the subscribe button below. It's the red subscribe button below and turn on the bell notification beside it so you know every time I upload new content. So my returning subscribers, welcome guys. I see that you people really like the videos that we make together. I was owing you guys a couple of conversations so we thought, you know what, it's a good day to pay one of them. <laughs> so that's why the husband man is here again today. Welcome Mr. Ethan. Thank you Marina for having me on the channel again uh what do we have uh, cooking today <laughs> of course we always have things cooking anyway before mm. i go any further guys i just wanted to um talk about something real quick um well first of all thank you guys so much for all the feedback on the previous videos that we have done together like the questions that come out from it the dms and the emails that i get regarding this tells me that people are learning from this and it makes us very very glad to do what we're doing you guys, please don't get this twisted. These conversations are not very comfortable conversations to have. <laughs> it's not it's not a hundred percent comfortable to just put our lives out there, but we are happy to know that it's helping people and that's why we continue doing what we're doing. As I mentioned to you guys before the series of videos started that it's leading up to our 10th anniversary. But guys, I don't there's one part of that story that I don't think I mentioned. On the day that our marriage becomes 10 years, which is on the 20th of August, it's also my birthday, guys. So it's double celebration, that's what we're having. And the birthday present that I want from all of you is that I'm hoping that by that day, we'll be able to hit 15,000 subscribers on this channel. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're a little over 13,000, so I know that we can do this, guys. That's the gift that I want from all of you. I see that a lot of you still watch the videos and a large percentage is not subscribed. So please, guys, let's get Marina a series to 15,000 subscribers by August 20th. It would mean so much to me. That's all the birthday present I want from you guys. So please, please, guys, hit subscribe. Let's do this, okay? Anyway, as you would have seen from the title of the video, uh, from the Q&A that we did a couple of weeks ago, one of the questions that we couldn't get to in that Q&A was, people wanted to know how moving to Canada has changed our marriage. And today, we're going to be tackling that. So if this is information that I know you people are interested in, you know what to do, definitely keep watching. <laughs> some content guys we're going to speak a little about where our marriage was by the time we moved to Canada so you would understand the transition and the things that changed okay so mister you know we always like to start with you so if you were if somebody asked you like what would you say was like the state of our marriage the state of our relationship at that time where we were moving um so I mean in the last video or the last one you talked about how we met and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It was all good, rosy, beautiful, lovey-dovey and stuff. And we had um, kids. This was like in the, the third year, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and work, work then was really stressful for me. Uh, I was starting to realize that I didn't want to do this anymore. And I was wondering what the exit plan was going to be. Um, and then the Canada thing came up and we started to apply um, again for the you know immigration process. So I think there was already those tension building in. Uh, with the benefit of hindsight, I realized it was even more than I realized. I thought it was just work and me, myself, but you were also going through stuff and it was rubbing off on you because I was literally out of the house every weekend and of course not even to mention during weekdays, you know, just doing work. So there was a lot of tension. Um, and like I said, benefit of hindsight, it's more, I realized it was more affecting you than it was me. For me, I was all involved in just work. Work is just crazy. I don't like it. I then realized that um, the relationship was Something really suffering. Something was suffering, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, I totally, totally, I like that uh, you're explaining some of these things the way it was for you and now with benefit of hindsight. Because for me, where we were, Honestly, I would say our relationship was not in a very good place 
at the point where we were moving out of Nigeria. Now, after going back to the last video we had where I said things changed, where things started to change was when we started having children. They were born in like consecutive years. That was already a lot of pressure on me. It was a lot of pressure on me emotionally, physically, like having two children back to back was a lot of pressure for me. And then it was a lot of pressure for us financially, the emotional part of just having one child now, having another one and work for him got really crazy in the year that our first child was born. So we went from two people who were always having fun, who was always, both of us were always hanging out. We always had things to do together, enjoying each other's company. We went from that to having him always at work. And you guys remember that my primary love language is quality time. Yeah. Do you already see where we're going with this? <laughs> so I had to do away with the primary language of love that I understood because he had to be at work. You know, it was not his fault. Things changed at that time and we had to make those adjustments to be able to sustain and keep the job. You know how it is in Nigeria, like the job that you have, you use your two hands to hold it, you know. So we had to make those adjustments, but I didn't realize how much making those adjustments took a toll on me, giving up my quality time, love language, and then having to at some point play mommy and daddy because daddy was unavailable. It was hard. It did, t it did take a toll. And what that just did for me was I was angry. I didn't realize how angry I was. I was tired. I was exhausted, you know. So when the whole, okay, it was time to move from Nigeria to Canada came up, for me it was like whew, breath of fresh air. We don't have to worry about all those things anymore. And uh, my husband is going to now become as available as I want him to be, you know. So it was a difficult place. It was a, things are not so good right now. But it was also a hopeful place to say, finally, we get a chance to start again and do this again and do it the right way this time, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's why I would say our, mar our marriage was before we left Nigeria. We, we realized that we didn't have that connection anymore. Um, I wasn't as present. I was, again, <laughs> you know, hindsight is so amazing. I wish we had it in the moment, but um, I knew that there was something missing. So we tried counseling, and I will be honest, I didn't give it 100% because I thought, this is not the problem. This is not the stressor. It is not the fact, you know, I, I, I think I know what the problem is. It's because it's work, and I can't do anything about exactly. it. Exactly. You know, I, I lost sight of the fact that there are certain things I could do. Um, you know, I could have given my commitment, not like I didn't attend the sessions I did, but it's just being that present, being present and participatory. Um, <laughs> so that's what we tried. I uh, like how you said, <laughs> I like how you said you could have given it more commitment because this thing used to cause fight. You guys were laughing about these things now, eh? but I can tell you for a fact that five years ago, this was a major source of pain for us. So going to counseling in Nigeria, I would say, at the end of the day, what counseling does is really not solve your problem. They just help you to look at the problem from a different perspective and give you like the tools that you need to handle things differently. But at the end of the day, even with the tools, it's up to you to now decide what you're going to do with those tools. That's what's going to guarantee the kind of results you get. So for us, we knew the tools. We understood like the basic things. We were able to tackle some of the foundational issues, but the follow up, the use of the tools to now improve and change the way we did things was where we were lacking. <laughs> Would you say? Yeah. That's what we were lacking. So even though we knew the tools, we were going through counseling and all of that, we were still in a shaky place when we left Nigeria. Okay. So for anybody who's considering counseling, just know that counseling is going to give you the tools that you need to work with, but the the use of the tools you have a role to play you have a participatory role to play in how the results turn out okay so when we got here take it away so when we got here um i mean those stressors that we thought we left um and then you know moved to a new city we practically had to leave everything we knew um, at Something some point it was, yeah, you know, I wanted to have this start, like fresh start. Um, but I didn't realize how <laughs> of a fresh start it would be. Um, so, you know, I got a job and, you know, basically going back to the, the same, same routine. <laughs> so, 
I'm like, you know what? This is not for me. This is not what I want to do. Um, just having been in Canada for a few months and you're like contemplating leaving this job. Like people not, I mean, people hearing that are like, are you crazy? Why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. But I think I just had enough. Um, and then, you know, that's basically career. And, then, and they realized that, look, I would have to make a switch. I would have to move from here if I wanted to be fulfilling and happy. So that was one thing I didn't see coming. Um, and the other thing is <clears throat> just the fact that, you know, when you're back in Nigeria, you have help. You basically don't have to do it all. Mm -hmm. um, if I was involved, maybe 10, 15 percent with the kids, when we moved, it was drastically, exponentially more. At that time, it was stressful. But, you know, over time, I've learned to enjoy the process. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's just in a nutshell how those things played out. Okay, so, um, yeah, I totally agree that we, we almost slipped back into the same pattern when we moved here. I would say that was a spin-off of the residue of what was already happening back in Nigeria because in Nigeria it was that you were not physically present because you had to be at work. There were times where he was at work till like 10, 11 p.m. That doesn't happen here. But when you now get off work at five, it now dawned on us that, okay, we have more time on our hands now, yeah. but it was like we did not remember how to communicate with each other. We didn't remember how to be friends. We could no longer connect on that level where we just played, where we just did nothing, where we just enjoyed each other's company. The time that we spent apart had created such a gulf between us that when we now had time, there was nothing for us to do together. So if we were not talking about bills, we were not talking about the children, we were not talking about maybe school or those responsibilities that come with being married couples, there was nothing both of us could do as Marina and Fred, husband, yeah. wife, lovers and whatever it is right yeah. we could not find that connection so even if some of the stressors from nigeria were no longer at play because i remember the times where we used to fight like why did you forget to buy fuel for the generator now my soup is bad we will not talk for two days <laughs> all the times that in the middle of the night you just hear pam it's your own transformer that exploded <laughs> <laughs> all the neighbors around you have light. Something happened to me that inside our own compound will not have light. And I'll be angry. So we took out that frustration <laughs> on each other. So that while was, we didn't have. <laughs> that wasn't fair. <laughs> well, part of the package, this full package you signed for. <laughs> you know, so while all those things were no longer stressors here, there were new sets of stressors. Like the stressor of, I hate this job. I don't want to continue doing this job or I can't find a job. I'm very frustrated. I've never been without a job now. I can't find one or the where are my friends? I can't talk to my family. I have to wait seven hours. I have something to say. I have to wait for people to wake up like those things. I say it countless times on this channel that those stressors, if you don't watch them, they have the potential to break you. And that's the truth. And I feel like that's those are the first set of things we encountered yeah. when we came here. I, I, I feel what it just did was expose the fact that you're not working the, the knowledge and the principles that you learn that you, la you have yeah um, so it was more of you know it's like she said we basically talk about every other thing but whether it's just us we don't couldn't find it the connection was missing so it was like that we tried to walk around it and just say okay you know what maybe it's the pressure of new country pressure of um, adjusting to life afresh, just maybe when we settle in things will get better. But guess what guys, it didn't get better. Nope, didn't. I feel like it got worse because it was now very obvious that it was not time that was the problem. It was not the fact that you were always at work that was the problem, but something fundamental was out of line. It was missing. You know, the thing is when I look back now in, in those moments, it's funny because I waited for you to change. Um, and you probably did the same thing like okay start not change per se but start doing those things that you know right and me I'm, I'm gonna be like okay Marina should start doing things that she knows we said we should do this we should do this these are the principles <laughs> so I was waiting on the other person and you probably were thinking dude you know what to do and you're not doing it mm -hmm. so it is just so funny how in this whole process of relationships we always look to the other person to change and we think we don't have any responsibilities as well. Or no, don't worry, for me, I can handle it, but you do your own. Exactly. You know, so that was just the part where like, I uh, know, something, something else. Something has to change. Babe, for me, I feel like 
another thing that was happening with me here was that I was very angry from all the times that I've had to deal with your absence and I felt like it was time for me to be compensated like at this point I have sacrificed, I have done mommy and daddy it's now time for you to pamper me so I sat back and I was waiting to be served <laughs> they served me breakfast, hot one <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to say okay it's time for you to now pay back and for you, you didn't even understand what you had to pay back because it was like babe I was the one who went to work and came back at 11 p.m. And, that, and that's, not, for and me that's not saying you weren't working too. Just exactly. Put that perspective. No, so what, I, what I meant was you were the one who had to spend so much time outside the house. So you also wanted to rest, not yeah. come back and compensate for working. Oh, yeah. Do you understand what I mean? So, yeah, it was not it, it, very it obvious. Was, it, was, it was hard to, to yeah. be honest. It was very... you, you were working too, and then you were doing all that stuff. So. You see what? That's why I was angry, <clears throat> honestly. That's how that's how we got to that point where I felt like it's now time for me to relax, step back for him to come and make up for all the lost time. But he had different ideas. Hi guys, so I'm taking a break to bring you guys a quick update about the Lemonade Finance app. Transfers from Canada to any bank in Nigeria, Naira accounts have now resumed on the Lemonade Finance app. So you can now resume transferring from Canada to any bank in Nigeria in under five minutes. On the Lemonade Finance app, you get the most competitive rates. The app is very user-friendly, very easy to set up. Additional good news, you can now transfer on the Lemonade Finance app from Canada to Kenya. Okay, it just keeps getting better. All you have to do is download the Lemonade Finance app on the Google Play Store or the App Store, follow the prompts to set up your account, you can fund your wallet using Interac and get transferring. If you use the referral code MARINA when you are setting up the account, you can get an extra 10% cash back on the value of your first transfer. So go ahead, download the Lemonade Finance app today, set up your account, get transferring, and you can come back and thank me later, okay? <laughs> anyway, it was now very obvious that we had major communication issues and those things showed up in a lot of yeah. places. Like, little things would trigger arguments and there will be tension in our house for yeah. days. We will not talk. Like, it was very frustrating. I'm not going to lie. And um, eventually, I think we reached a point where we knew that we could not continue like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things I would say here is, is you may know everything you need to do, but if you don't do it, you, you can't change the situation. Um, you know, just for example, maybe communication or a handling conflict. And we decided that if there was something wrong, either of us would say, honey, you know what, I'm quite upset right now about maybe what you did. Um, I don't want to talk about it now. We can talk about it later. It gives the other person some kind of reprieve that, okay, I know what the issue is. Because one of the things I used to absolutely, I just go bonkers about is I don't know what it is that she's upset about. Because but I shut down. Is, when I'm up, like, just to create a little context to that, when I'm upset about something, I shut down. Shut, That's how I manage. You shut down like a transformer. Because, <laughs> because when I'm angry, I don't want to say something that I'll come back and be sorry about. So I shut down. In that shutting down, um, guys, a couple of years ago, it would be me building walls. Like, you cannot reach me. Shut, you will know that I'm upset. You will not know why I'm upset. <laughs> Oh God. So I used to be the queen of just what they call it stonewalling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bad so, behavior. Bad. So you know, even if I knew that we had decided if either of us was upset, the other person was going to, you know, say, Hey, you know what, I'm upset with you because of what you did. Um I don't want to talk about it now, we can talk about it later. We didn't do those things. Um so we just further saw the communication chain just break down. And even when we tried to do it, because it was not practice, it was more like you're just trying to let it be that you justified saying it. There was not a follow through. So I think that's one of the things that we're learning to do now is practice those things and to become second, second nature. nature. Because even now, sometimes we go maybe a couple of hours and we, it's obvious we haven't said anything to each other. I'm like, you know, but now it's becoming second nature to say if something's wrong, okay, let's talk about it. Even if it's not. I don't know. So it could be something else that you're mm -hmm. upset about. Say, look, it's not you. I feel this way now. I just need some time. And then, yeah, so. That's what we're learning to do now. We came to that point where we knew that something had to change. Like, we could no longer continue like that. And the first thing that we tried to do, guys, was get help. This part, I feel like a lot of people underestimate the power of getting help. 
where I think people miss it is where they try to get help from. We first talk to the people around us who we could trust, the people who we could um, trust what their, what their drive was, people who we, look, we, we looked up to. From time to time, we'll ask questions. to we'll say, you know, how do you guys handle this part? We're struggling here, we're struggling here. They'll give the advice that they can, of course, within the confines of what they can share with us. But then we took it further and decided to get like professional help. What, what we did differently this time with the tools that professional help gave us is we now got reminded again. See, we have done counseling before. We have seen what it was like to know what to do and not do it. So this time, <laughs> instead of us now going to blow this money and still not do anything with the tools <laughs> that they have given us, let's just use the money to buy ice cream and stay at home. <laughs> but, but we decided that this time we're going to do it differently. We're going to utilize the tools that we have been given and that's how we got here. One part of all of this I'd like to mention is when I say we, we reach out to people around us, this is one part where a lot of people struggle. Because you're already in a new place, you're trying to adjust to life, and it applies to people who are living in their home countries as well. There's that notion that when you have trouble in your marriage, don't tell anybody. I struggle a lot with that no third party idea. I struggle a lot with it because that's what was handed down. It's like whatever issue is going on, both of you deal with it yourself. But is it everything both of you can deal with yourself? It's, you know, just culture. Culture plays a huge role. Major role. role. Um, and again, for good reason. Some people too have had uh, relationships or marriages more complicated because of the people that allowed into the space. I think one of the things we did was being was getting accountability mm -hmm. <clears throat> um and it wasn't easy for me then because you know as a man you always want to you know i can fix this you know i just need to make some changes but then you just realize that you're too far down the ladder to catch up and be in the space that your wife or your spouse or whoever partner wants you to be in so we started that process of looking for people who we could be accountable to and again, it was more important to us that we understood that these people had the best interest, our, our best, best interest. Because I think I don't think you should be getting advice from people who don't have to live with the consequences um, of that decision that they advise you to make. You know, so we thought they had they had skin in the game as well. So yeah, that's what we did, and I think we have more than one. Yeah. Um, I think it's just because um, of the perspectives that each of them bring, but the principles are still the same. Exactly. So we came to the point where we knew that we could no longer do it by, by ourselves. And coming back to what I was saying before about the third party thing, like you said, some people have had their relationships more complicated because of who got involved. So what I would advise anybody who, like for married couples, maybe have at least one, one place, one other couple that both of you have agreed to go to when there's a problem like there should be somebody who can call either of you to order there must be that place where you go to where there's somebody you respect enough to say yeah. come to my house now and you will show up you know so we had to get those people for us get that person that we both have agreed that if anything goes wrong this person is allowed to have a say in what's going on these people are allowed to have a say don't just bring any random person or any other person into your relationship some people say stay away from family look honestly i think it can go both ways depending on who your family is for some people family have been able to give them very sound advice for some other people family scattered the thing. everybody go <laughs> but we know now other stories of people where it was family that now put the final nail in the coffin you know so just both of you agree and agree specifically on who is allowed to have a say in your relationship so i think that worked for us a lot we have accountability partners we have people who are interested in seeing us succeed people who who are interested in seeing us prosper all round especially in our relationship Absolutely. you know so where would you say we are now i think we're still not where we want to be um, I think that's that's a journey because one of the things we've tried to do is say we want to be this kind of couple um, but we we've also realized that we will make mistakes I think my my where I'm changing and some of the things I'm changing in is um, being more intentional um, I'm not the kind of person who talks a lot like I, it's not just my character but I think one of the things I've come to realize is I made a lot of excuses about not doing certain principles because yeah it's, that's that's not who I am 
Use it's your not, personality to so hide. I use my personality to hide behind <laughs> yeah. those things. And now I realize you're just making excuses. So I think, yes, people have personalities. And I think it's important that people identify who they are. But when it comes to marriage, there are some things that you have to compromise on um, to make it work. And that's why it's all about sacrifice. It's, it's not about, no, that's not who I am. Oh, that's not who I am. Then, okay, something's going to suffer. So I think where we are right now, in a much better place. I think right now there isn't a conscious effort to not do right because you know the things that work. And one, I'll end it this way. I've seen the dividends of putting in the effort and putting in the work. Um, it's now second nature for me. And sometimes I hold back. We had a quarrel a few days ago and I think, ah, I just wanted us to quarrel for a bit. But because you're now allergic to peace. <laughs> So, so it's fun, like you know that you can do this and it would work. And mo most importantly, I communicate that it's actually genuine. I'm doing it because I'm not just wearing a dress in, or just, oh, I'm just saying it for the camera, so whatever. I'm actually doing it because I know that I realize that this works. And it, 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 it's, it's always, making you happy is, is always best, I think. Yes, making me happy is your primary responsibility. Yes. <laughs> well, it involves money. Of course, it was your money, of course. <laughs> and we're just kidding. Making me happy is my primary responsibility. What he does is addition. Anyway, so come to, to sum this all up, guys. We're not going to sit down here and tell you that it has been a rosy journey. I hope from all I've said so far, you can tell that. It was not a walk in the park. We did not wake up overnight and become this couple that you guys see and now admire. A lot of work went into it. The road was bumpy, right? But we came to the point where we had both seen bumpy and we had both seen what our marriage could be. And we chose to put in the work to make our marriage what we wanted it to be. Like, like my husband said, it's still a work in progress. There are still times where we stumble. But we're trying to make sure that we're not stumbling over the same things over and over. If you haven't taken anything from this video today, I need you guys to remember something that um, while moving from your home country to Canada can be an opportunity for a fresh start, it is not automatically, the issues that you have will not automatically fix themselves because you are now in a new location. For us, even though the stressors were different and location had changed, the fundamental issue that we had stayed with us it was not a it did not change because our location had changed that's basically what i'm trying to say like you would need to put in the work you would need to put in that effort because this place has the potential to um amplify the problems in your relationship we experienced that firsthand both of you need to first of all recognize your problem and be able to put in the work to get you from where you are to where you intend to be right so that's what that's what we want you to take away from this how did canada change our marriage Canada exposed the flaws. Moving here, starting life afresh in this place, exposed the cracks in our relationship, exposed the flaws. We saw how bad it could get. And then we chose that we did not want it to get there. We did something about it. We got help where we needed to. We got accountability partners where we needed to. And we put in the work to get it from that bad point to where it is right now. And we're still on our way, on our way to where we want it to go. It's still work in progress. As far as we're here, we're still going to offend each other. But now I have learned how to be gracious, more gracious, more tolerant, more accepting of who he is. And honestly, I have known that and now I know peace. <laughs> I've learned how to let go of what is outside my control and still be a baby girl in the process. Not be afraid to express how I feel. Not be afraid to ask for what I want and stop assuming that he knows what I want. You guys, I lost too many years of things that I could have said, you know what, I really want you to do that. From say, but how does he not know he's supposed to do that? Very different. The guy will just carry on with his life. Because in actual sense, he did not even know <laughs> what I was talking about. But me, I was there sulking. And why won't he know? So I've learned how now to, in black and white, just say, you know what? This is, how, this is what I want and this is what I expect you to do. And peace is working from there. From telling him one, two, three, now he's getting the hint and taking the cue to say, okay, no, she doesn't have to tell me for me to do it next time. So it's still, it's still a lot of work going on here. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's a lot of work. It's work in progress. And I'm just glad that we're here now counting down to year 10. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited about that, guys, because honestly, there was a period in the period where 
things were really hard for us i really did not know i did not think that we were going to see a 10. i actually thought about that for a while like i don't think this is going to happen i don't know if we can sustain this for 10 years but i'm glad that we're counting down to year 10 now and we're in a completely different place from where we were at that time so i'm, I'm excited i'm really looking forward to this yeah actually 10 years wow <laughs> it sounds like a whole long time right yeah wow that's a just thinking back yeah <laughs> anyway thank you so much guys for watching this video i really do hope you guys learned from this if you did please as usual leave it in the comment section below and if you have not subscribed you guys i'm begging you again please birthday present for me anniversary present for us anyway thank you very much for watching this video guys we really do hope you learned from it if you did please leave it in the comment section if you haven't subscribed please subscribe okay thank you so much for watching this video guys and until we come your way in the next video it's marina and mr etheng saying thank you and have a great day bye, bye guys